Is there enough water for everybody? <laughs> Hi, my name's Lee Moyer, and this is Crowded Planet, a project of the Center for Biological Diversity. Water, water everywhere, but not a drop to drink. Well, that isn't really true. You probably filled up a cup straight from the faucet pretty recently. But we're not just drinking water, we're using it to water lawns and golf courses and letting it drip away a trillion gallons a year through leaky pipes in our homes. If you're like me and live in the dry Southwest, Drought is a constant concern, and yet we have booming cities and suburbs that increase pressure on our rivers and aquifers every day. This probably goes without saying, but water is really important. We need it to grow food, for sanitation, for basic survival. And we've done a really good job of making sure there's plenty of it wherever we live. But in many cases, that's because we bring it to where we are by diverting rivers and tapping groundwater aquifers, often spending ridiculous amounts of energy to do so. But you know who else needs water to survive? Wildlife. So is there enough water for everybody? Well, the more water humans take for ourselves, the less is available for native plants and animals. You see, when rivers and streams are diverted to provide municipal water and irrigation for crops or dammed to create a reservoir, it changes the ecosystem. In many cases, rivers that used to flow to the ocean no longer do, including the famous Colorado River. And when those rivers run dry, well, there goes the neighborhood for birds, amphib amphibians, and fish, not to mention other species that depend on a water source. Species like the San Joaquin kit fox, the coho salmon, and the Salt Creek tiger beetle are all threatened due to habitat loss made worse by overconsumption of water in urban areas. Okay, so maybe you'd argue that making sure people don't go thirsty is more important than worrying about wildlife. If so, have you never seen a kit fox? They're so cute. But more to the point, overuse of water now, particularly in areas that depend on groundwater sources, means less water in the future, and not just for kit foxes, for us. Most states don't even monitor groundwater use, let alone regulate it. And that means for wildlife and humans, we could be facing a very thirsty future. And unfortunately for our water supplies, human population growth isn't in a dry spell, and overconsumption and water waste is just making everything worse. So what can we do? Drought is a real concern across the country, but its effect on our water resources varies depending on location. So if we're gonna keep living in the desert, we need to reevaluate our water needs. Do we really have to have lawns instead of natural water-friendly landscaping? Are there better ways to grow crops? Can we just stop building golf courses in the desert already? We can also make changes at home that require no investment and can help cut back on water waste. If you have a lawn, let it go brown and check your house for leaks, both inside and outside. And maybe flush your toilet less. You know, if it's yellow, let it mellow. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Crowded Planet.